Hi everyone, it's Bradley Bush again with another algebra video. Today we're talking about polynomials and their graphs. Specifically, we'll talk about zeros of polynomials and how to find them by factoring. So our to-do list today, first off, a quick polynomial review might be helpful if you've forgotten what a polynomial is. The second thing we'll do is we'll talk about what a zero is. I mean, what is a zero of a polynomial? It's kind of a weird term, right? Third thing, how do you find a zero once you know what it is? And the fourth thing we'll do is we'll do two examples where we find zeros of polynomials by factoring. All right, let's start. Here's our quick review of polynomials. Polynomials are really not terrible things. Here's an example down here, and you probably are looking at that thinking, oh, that's what that is. Yeah, it's not, it's not a big deal at all. There are three features of a polynomial that I need I want to talk about. The first feature is the variables. You have these variables hanging out here. And I don't know if you knew this, but we're going to add one right here. And we'll put a 0 as the exponent. Because we know anything to the 0 equals 1. So it's just like I, added, I multiplied by 1 there. And I'm going to put an exponent right there of 1 because we know that that's implied. So the first thing we have are these are, are the variables right we have the variables we have this crazy definition up top it looks really nasty and honestly it isn't it's actually super easy it's just a very generic way to describe the thing that you see down below the example below so if it's generic we've got to you know kind of use variables that can represent wide ranges of things so just think of it like that. But we have the same x's, right? You see an x here, you see an x there, you see an x there, there. And then here's the one that we added that isn't there, really. So it has x's, not a problem. The next thing we'll talk about, the second component we'll talk about, is uh, we have exponents, right? Let's, let's do those in pink. So we've got exponents. Here we have 3, here we have 2, here we've got a 1 right there, which is really hard to see. There we go. And we have a 0. So we've got exponents, and you can see that they're in descending order. And that's traditionally how you put them when, you're, when you're, your polynomial is written in standard form. So that's what we have up top in our definition. We've got an n, which represents the highest power. So in our example below, n equals 3. So we have our highest power, which is n. And then we count down by 1s. So this one is whatever the first one was, but minus 1. The second one is whatever the first one was, minus 2. Because that's how we do it, right? 3, 2, 1, 3. 2 is 3 minus 1, 1 is 3 minus 2. So we're just counting down backwards. That's it. That's absolutely it. Then we have some dot, dot, dots here because, right here, because it could continue because n in our definition is generic. So it can be anything. It could be a million. So we've got a bunch of stuff happening. It just continues like this, counting down until we get to the x to the 1 power. And then we have our, whoops, that wasn't what I meant to do. We have our x to the 0 power right there. So it's just like our example down below. It's just generic, right? So we have these exponents. And again, they're in decreasing order. There's something that's important to note, though, and that is your exponents n has to come from, all of your exponents have to be 0, 1, 2, and on up. They have to be non-negative integers, period. No fractions, no negatives, just non-negative integers. And the last thing we have is the coefficients, the numbers in front. Let's do those in blue. So we've got a number there, a number there, a number there, a number here. A bunch of numbers. That's what these A's are. They're just numbers. And the N below here, it just says it goes with the first term, who has an exponent of N. The N minus 1 in the second one, the second a just means it's just a label. It says it goes, it's the coefficient, it's the number in front of the x with the n minus 1 in the exponent. The n minus 2, it's just a label. It tells it goes with this third term. That's it. Literally, that's it. So we've got a bunch of constants, right? 
that's all we have. So if I wrote those constants down below, this would be a3, this would be a2, this would be a1, and this would be a0. Boom, we're done. Not a problem at all, right? And the exponent, or sorry, the coefficients can be any real number. They just can't be imaginary. That's it. Polynomials are also smooth and continuous, meaning they have nice shapes, they're nice curves. You don't have jagged edges or breaks. And the highest power n is called the degree of the polynomial. So our polynomial down here has a 3 as its highest power, so it's a third degree polynomial. Boom, you're done. Nice quick refresher course on polynomials. All right, finding zeros of polynomials. Well, first of all, what is a zero? The great thing is that zeros are just x-intercepts. That's it. I know, I don't know why they use the terms, well, they use the term zero because the y-coordinate of the x-intercept is zero. And the function value is zero at that point. So that's where they, where they get the name, but it's just another name. It's really just an x-intercept. There are other names you can also use, like the root, uh, the solution, zero. Zero, x-intercept, root, solution, all mean the same thing. Awesome, huh? You're like, why do they do that to me? So to find the x-intercept, that goes back to previous algebra things that you're like, yeah, I know how to do that. You just take the function that they give you, and you set it equal to zero. And then you solve the equation they give you the results from that from for x and that's it well now we know what a zero is how do you find a zero there are quite a few solution techniques in fact um, in algebra classes you could talk about these techniques for a month or two i mean there's a lot there, there's a lot of techniques there are lots of techniques you can use you can use factoring to solve the equation that you get uh, factoring has lots of different subgroups. Factoring by grouping, um, special factoring forms like difference of squares, difference of cubes, um, lots of different options for factoring. You could complete the square for a second degree polynomial. You could use the quadratic formula if you have a second degree polynomial. Uh, you could graph or use other technology. You could use your calculator like your TI-85 or whatever type of cal graph and calculator you have. Or you could use something like Desmos uh, online. Or you could also use synthetic division in conjunction with graphing uh, to verify if you have roots and then slowly peel away all of the roots that you have until you found them all. Synthetic division often works with um, polynomials that have a very high degree, like a fifth degree polynomial or a fourth degree polynomial or something big like that. So that's, those are the techniques you can use. This specific video focuses on the first one, factoring. Now let's talk about, let's give you two examples of factoring, finding zeros by factoring. Well, this is our function. It says find the zeros of the polynomial. I have given you the graph already, so you know where the zeros are, right? You know that one of these zeros is going to be negative 1, 0, and the other zero is going to be 2, 0. So we know what, where we're going. Now let's get there algebraically. So the first step is always to set what they give you equal to 0. If you need to get, if they give you an equation with an equal sign, then you get everything to one side, and that gives you the 0 on the other side. So now we just factor. And uh, if we factored this, we would see that we can factor this into x minus 2 and x plus 1. That 2 is not very nice looking. Now we look at this and we're like, hey, check that out. We have something times something else equals 0. So we can set both of those things equal to 0 and solve. So we get x minus 2 equals 0. If we add 2 to both sides, then we get x equals positive 2. There's one of our solutions. And check that out. We know which solution that is, right? We can see it. 
we can see it over here. Now let's look at the other one. Ikes, that looks like a Z. Let's do that one more time. Let's find the other one. We take x plus 1 and set it equal to 0 and solve. Subtract 1 from both sides, and we get x equals negative 1. We knew that was going to happen, right? Because we see it right there. So the zeros that we have for our polynomial x squared minus x minus 2, we have negative 1 and 0. And the other one is 2 and 0. And we found the zeros for this polynomial using, using factoring. Not too, not too hard, right? Let's do another one. Whoa, that was a little bit too fast. There we go. So here's our function. Here's our polynomial. x cubed plus 3x squared minus x minus 3. I've given you the graph again so you know what the zeros are going to be. Negative 3, negative 1, and positive 1. But let's find them algebraically. So again, we're going to start off by setting this equal to 0. And we have four terms. Often when we have four terms and we're trying to factor, our first option that we try is factoring by grouping. So let's group these into two groups of two. And I'm just going to take the first two and the second two and see if this works. So we look for a commonality between the first two terms, and they both have x squared. So let's pull out an x squared. If we pull out an x squared, we'll have something. And I can see a negative in the second two terms. Let's pull out a negative 1. And let's see what's left over. Well, in the first two terms, if we pull out an x squared of the first x cubed, then we were only left with just x. And if we pull out the all of the x uh, x's in the second term, we just have positive 3. If we look at our next two terms, the negative x, negative 3, if we pull out a negative from the x, we've got a positive x. If we pull out a negative from the negative 3, we've got a positive 3. That worked perfectly, right? Because what we wanted was we wanted the stuff that was left over to be the same so that we could factor it out. And that's what we do, right? These two are the same. So perfect. It totally works. We can pull out x plus 3. And what's left over? Uh, well, we have an x squared here, and we've got a negative 1 here, so that those come down. into the second parenthesis. So are we done? Well, x plus 3, that we can't do anything with that. The x squared plus 1, that actually looks like a special factoring form, like the difference of squares. You could x squared is something squared, and 1 you can always write as 1 squared. So we can actually factor this one further. So we can continue down with our x plus 3. That just falls down. But then we have two new things. We have x plus 1 and x minus 1. Now we look at this and we're like, uh, awesome, 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 because now we have all everything factored and we've got a product of three things, which means a plus b plus c all equals 0. We can set them all equal to 0 and solve. So let's start with the a. That gives us x plus 3 equals 0. If we subtract 3 from both sides, we get x equals negative 3. Not a shocker, right? We knew that was coming. Now let's do the next one. x plus 1 equals 0. Subtract 1 from both sides. That gives us x equals negative 1. Also not surprised with that, right? Because we saw the picture of the function. We knew where the x-intercepts were. 
So we knew what we were going to get, but we're just finding them algebraically now. So x minus 1 equals 0. Add 1 to both sides to solve for the x. And we get x equals positive 1. All right. Now, check this out. We knew with the negative 3, the negative 3 was right there. How about the negative 1? Where's the negative 1? Awesome, right there. And the positive 1. Where's the positive 1? Right there. We're good. So we can write down all of our zeros for this polynomial. Or, in other words, all of the x-intercepts. Negative 3, 0 is 1. Negative 1, 0 is the other or is another, and the last is positive 1 and 0. So there we go. All the zeros of the polynomial, polynomial x cubed plus 3x squared minus 6 minus 3. Hope this was helpful. If it was, subscribe to the channel, and have a great day. Thanks for watching.